I've learned that even when you're having good times, that there is simultaneously going some difficult times. I've learned that even though when the road is difficult, that we serve a God that's always there. I've learned that we celebrated 36 years this week. Time to celebrate, but I've also learned that during our celebration, there's still some things that break your heart. I've also learned that God will always show up. That song, one of the times this week when my eyes were filled God knows what we need. I wanted to get to the place, Reverend Irving, that even though I was experiencing some joy, I was still having some pain. And I know y'all don't know about this, but joy and pain is like sunshine. I've learned that God will show up and somehow that song came up on my phone just when I needed it. I don't want to say it was coincidental because I don't believe God does anything by coincidence. But he knew I needed that song. That I would, I would lift my hands in total praise. I would lift my hands. I needed that song. Right at the right time. Didn't solve my problems. John, it didn't end, but it did give me some solace. It made me feel like I'd run on a little while longer. For those of you who are looking at me funny and strange, yes, pastors get hurt too. But I remember growing up in my daddy's church and they would sing, Reverend Deacon Harper, charge I keep I have, a God to glorify. Reverend Edith, I still got a charge that I have to show up no matter what the pain is. Amen? Brother and Sister Linda Cobb, so good to see you. Give all our guests and visitors one more great big hand. Tell them you're glad to see you. Welcome home. It is so good to have you in worship with us this morning. They moved to Cincinnati and some years ago, and they came back. And Y'all get mad at them. Don't speak to them because they moved on the other side of town. Just teasing. Oh, blame it on, she said blame it on Richard, okay. We're good, that we're glad to see you and all of our guests and visitors. Grab your Bibles, let's look at the word of the Lord for just a few moments. I'm going to hit the highlights so that you can go away this week with a word that I hope encourages you and also convicts you. You don't always need to shout and feel good. Every once in a while you need to feel convicted that I need to do better. Amen, somebody. I need to do better. God is calling me to higher places. Luke chapter 14, Luke chapter 14. Beginning at verse 15, Luke chapter 14, beginning at verse 15. Jesus is giving a parable. And it's interesting, Dr. Peterson that he gives this parable in response, in response to the previous parable, which is around suppers, around, if you will, galas, 
around times of people getting together. Jesus is such a wonderful teacher that he takes everyday common experiences and relates those to the kingdom of God. Are you at verse 15? Listen to what it says. Now when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus, he, then he, Jesus said to him, a certain man gave a great supper and invited many and sent his servants at supper time to say to those who were invited, come, for all things are now ready. Come, for all things are now ready, but they all with one accord begin to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. And still another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and to the lanes of the city and bring in here the poor. The lame, the maimed and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you have commanded, and there's still room. My Lord. Huh. And then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compelled them to come in that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall eat and taste my supper. Lord have mercy. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We give you praise for your word. We pray now that you would let it be spread as seed. Father, let it fall into good places in the hearts of your people. This seed will grow up and bring forth a harvest. In the name of Jesus, bless your servant that I may hear only you and speak only thus saith the Lord. In Jesus' name, everybody says amen and amen. You may be seated. The title this morning I want you to think about for a moment is the invitation. Sister Bridget Peterson, the invitation. As Minister Kim was standing here just a little while ago asking about all the cookouts, we were wondering what happened to our invitation. Some people will have different kinds of activities. And when we find out that we were not on the invite list, we get upset. Okay, maybe I'm just talking about me. When we are not on the invitation list, on the invitation roster, somehow we ask, why were we neglected? Were we not good enough? What is it about this event that they did not take the time or think me worthy to be invited? Brothers and sisters, to hasten time along this morning, I want you to understand this, that this passage is not only eschatological, meaning in time, but it is also present day reality. This is talking about the present kingdom that we should all be a part of. We call it salvation. 
We call it being born again and living the life that God wants us to live. Jesus has invited us to all come to the table. I got to hurry. Jesus has invited all of us to come to this great banquet feast that is happening right now. It may seem like it is projected into the future, but we are and should be experiencing this feast right now. It is a present day reality, should be a present day reality in all of our lives that we experience this wonderful banquet. Wouldn't you want to be a part of something where the banquet is full of wonderful, lavish foods. I don't know what your favorite food is. I don't know what your favorite, um, I mean, um, uh, sir, I mean, um, whatever your drink is, fruit punch, whatever it is, you want to be a part of that banquet. To dress in your finest and to show up. But there is a God who has made a banquet for us. And the banquet, brothers and sisters, is not future tense per se, but it is present tense. And you and I have been invited. We should be experiencing the graciousness of God in his salvation. This, of course, is a salvation message about come. When we had communion earlier, try to express to you that as you were thinking about communion, it was at the invitation of Jesus for us to come. The invitation has been extended to everyone, not to a select few, as some would have you think. The invitation is for anyone that will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. It's interesting to me and I, uh, that if you look at verse 7 through verse 14, Jesus gives another example of a feast. And this guest who says, I want to sit in the special place. And Jesus warns him that you need to be careful about always wanting to sitting in the place of honor because the person who is in charge may not want you to have that honor. Lord have mercy, let me just break this down for you real quick. Jesus is referencing the Jews and those who are in power that right now they think that just because they're in power that God is on their side. Can I get a witness? If I could really go off, off script, I'll talk about the disastrous decisions this week from SCOTUS. Some very disastrous descriptions, and very disastrous. And Judge Sotomayor tried to tell us that we are not under a man-king where people would want us to be under a king, per se, in this country. This country was founded on the principles that all men are created equal, and nobody is above the law. Can I get a witness in the house? But people, Jesus wants us to know that everybody who sits at the table ain't necessarily going to get in. Amen, somebody. Let me just say it another way. Everybody who says, Lord, Lord. Amen. We have to be careful. Let me get to three quick points for you so I can let you go. This passage of scripture deals with salvation and having the invitation. The invitation has went out since the beginning. Jesus says, listen carefully, when he says, it is finished, 
the work for us to be, be able to go to this banquet was at hand. You with me? When Jesus completed his mission of dying on the cross and being raised from the dead, was therefore then the time that we could claim that we are the people of God. And as a result of our salvation experience, we are all present at the table. Can I just say something to you? Don't go through this life as though you're not at the table. This is what Jesus has prepared for us. And if you neglect this, you neglect the fullness of the, of the table that God has prepared before us. Lord have mercy, I'm doing better than y'all are acting. I promise I am. If you would just understand that the table has already been set. The table has already been prepared for us. That anything we need, that when we ingest it, we become a part of it. Lord have mercy, teach Pastor Bailey. That, that when you eat it, you become, it becomes a part of you. You are what you eat. Can I get a witness in the house? If that is the case, you are what you eat, then what you eat will be manifested in your life. Can, can, can I make you laugh for a moment? Doc, I'm sitting here with these rolls because I am what I eat. I try to hide it, but I can't. I found this place that I wish I hadn't ever found. I, I don't, I don't want to, I got to be careful how I say this because some of y'all are going to take this the wrong way. I found a crack house. And it's called Crumbles. I can't drive down the street without it calling my name. My car won't let me drive past Crumbles. I, I, I try to get past it, but I got to stop at Crumbles and see what's got, what they got. And because I am what I eat, it just won't leave me alone. Amen, somebody. Take it from your pastor. Don't go to crumbles. I beg of you. It's, they, they so good and soft and warm. Oh, I'm getting a fix right now just thinking about it. And, and they got glaze on them and icing that, just, that just, just melts in your mouth. And just, I sit at the store and eat maybe one or two and then just, Lord, I shouldn't do this. Let me go get two more so I can just take them home. Anybody? Don't go to crumbles. Don't go to crumbles, cause it'll stay with you. It'll, you'll carry it around, make your knees hurt, make your back hurt. The invitation to the kingdom. Here are the three things you're ready for. I'm glad y'all are laughing. Here, here's the first one. The invitation is the invitation to come. Look at what Jesus says. Come, verse 17, come, for all things are now ready. Jesus rings the dinner bell, if you will, and says everything has been prepared. All you got to do is come. Lord have mercy. You ain't got to bring a covered dish. 
You ain't got to bring your Tupperware. All you got to do is dress in your finest and come on to the party. The interesting thing about this, if I had some, some Greek scholars in here, is that the way this is written is that it is written in the pretense of ongoing. This come is not just a singular come. It is a continuation of come. Lord have mercy. Let me see if I can help you real quick. He says, I've already invited you. You told me you was coming. Now come on. Lord have mercy. Y'all ain't with that. It is if Jesus is telling us to come and keep on coming. Get saved and keep on following him. Get saved and give your life to him and become that disciplined disciple that follows Jesus no matter what goes on in your life. Can I get about three or four people in the room that had to follow him through some ups and some downs? Can I get about three or four people that know what I'm talking about? That when your eyes are filled with tears and people are getting on your nerves, you still got to come and follow him no matter what the circumstances are telling you. Oh yeah. He tells us to come and keep on coming. He says, I've already prepared it. And all I got, you got to do is come. You need to become four, th four things under this. You need to become not a casual follower. You, some people are casual disciples. They're casual. You know them. They're, they're just lackadaisical about the things of God. God is telling them to come on in like, well, you know, they're just a casual. Then you have those who are, are, are convenient. I follow when it's convenient for me. You got casual followers, say I got casual followers, and you got convenient followers. When it's not inconvenient for you, then you will follow him. Lord have mercy. You go from casual to convenient, then you get to just false followers. They look like a follower, but when you peel it back, they are not a follower at all. Amen, somebody. Don't, I didn't say they don't come to church. I didn't say they were, even the casual and the convenient people come to church. But so does the false people come to church. Be careful. Don't become a false follower. Well, you know you look good at the banquet. But you just showed up to show up. Lord have mercy. Then finally, you got the passionate follower. That's the one that has real conviction. That's the one that's going to follow Jesus, and they're going to take up his cross and follow him. That no matter what's going on, they're going to follow Jesus. Don't be a casual follower. Don't be a convenient follower. Certainly don't be a false follower. With all your heart, try to be passionate about the call of Jesus. The invitation, number one, is to come. Number two, y'all ready for it? You sure? Excuses don't excuse. Excuses don't excuse. Oh, y'all know how it is. Look at what the text says, that these people at every turn, and the Bible says, with one accord, they all got excuses. Do you see it? Just look at 18, 19, 20. They all come back with an excuse of why you've been invited. Watch this. Jesus sent out the invitation, sent out, saved the date, sent out the RSVP. And some of us say, yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, I'll do my part in the church. Yes, I'll do my part in what Jesus has called me to do. But yet and still, when it's time to really do what Jesus told you to do, you got excuses. Lord have mercy. I know you're mad right now, but it's okay. We specialize in giving God excuses. 
Because I got to run, let me just tell you one. Y'all know how it goes. The Lord know my heart. Yeah. I know none of y'all, I'm talking about people out there, I ain't saying none of y'all have ever used that. The Lord know my heart. And if you dig deep into that, yes, the Lord knows your heart. And he knows your lack of faith. He knows your lack of commitment. He knows that you're doing nothing but excusing yourself from the call that God has placed on your life. I told you it's first Sunday, so I got to tell you about Jesus. Excuses don't excuse. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that this excuse that they started giving made the master of the house angry. Do y'all see it? Said it, it, it? It got on his nerves. It made him angry. Look at verse 21. He said it made him angry that the people who said they would do it turn around and don't do it. Oh, Jesus. Brothers and sisters, listen. Let me just tell you some things about excuses. A, excuses reveal what you're most in love with. Excuses reveal what you're most in love with. I love the Lord with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength. Come on, go to church with me tonight. Well, I can't go tonight. The Lord knows my heart. You ready? Excuses reveal what we really think about Jesus. They do. Excuses reveal what we really think about Jesus. I got to go make this money. And see the final one, excuses reveal how much faith we have in Jesus. Listen, listen to these. Of these three people, these three men who they sent to do this, one of them says, my profession is more important than going to be with Jesus. Says, I bought five yoke, ten oxen that I have to go check. My profession and what I'm investing in is more important than Jesus. Be careful, brothers and sisters, that work takes you away from Jesus. If I was preaching, I would preach through here. Because what you going to do when the work is no more? Then you're going to cry out and try to become a, a passionate follower. Knowing that you were inconsistent and a convenient follower because the job was supplying something that you needed. And therefore, you put your hope, your trust in your profession. Can I get about three people to say I cannot depend on my profession? I, I, I know it's important to you. I know that you think it puts the, the food and keeps the house, uh, the roof over your head. But can I just tell you, some of you have been laid off and know you should have been put out. But it was an ample supply that God placed in your life and promised you I will supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. It is not your job that supplies your need. Your job is just a resource and God is the source. The job can be there, but if you have some catastrophic illness, then what's going to happen? You have to learn to trust and depend on Jesus because he's the only one that can get you through. Can I get about five people to say, I'm depending on the Lord because my profession can't do it. Whatever your profession is, whatever you're depending on to give you um, 
that paycheck. Be careful that you don't put it before God. The other one says, my property is more important. The things that I have are more important than Jesus. Listen to him. I have bought a field and I have to go and check the field. Somebody tell me, please, is that field going anywhere? Can, can, okay, I got I to gotta answer from this side, but is the property going anywhere? Be careful that property don't take you away from Jesus. I know you like your car. I know you like your house. I know you like your diamonds, but don't let them take you away from Jesus. Y'all know they do sometimes. We put more focus on things than we do on Jesus. And Jesus says, I will uninvite you. Lord have mercy. Here's a C. You ready for it? You got your profession that causes you to make excuses for not doing what God calls you to do. You got property, things that causes you to not do what God calls you to do. You ready for it? It's right there. What do you say? I just got married. And I got to go home and lay up with my, I mean, I got to go home <laughs> and keep an eye because she's so pretty. He's so fine. I, I can't come because people will keep you away from Jesus. Can I get a witness? You all in Australia trying to follow behind somebody who ain't got no relationship with Jesus. Watch this. Let me talk to somebody for one moment. If they are not strong Christians when you meet them, don't you think you're going to make them into strong Christians? Be careful who you get to hook up with. Amen, somebody? Because just because they tell you, Lord, Lord, don't mean... sit down. Here's the third one. The Bible says he gets angry. Here's the third one. There's still room. I'm finished. Look at what he says. Between the two parables of the invited guest, the two parables, they're not juxtaposed, but they are right beside each other, helping us to get a deeper and clearer understanding of the kingdom of God and what God is preparing for us. The man tells his servant, I want you to go out and all those people who were left off, they now get invited. You missed your shout. All those people who others looked over and said they wasn't going to amount to anything. All the people who were hurting and people stepped over them. All the people who were crying and didn't have certain clothes to put on. They didn't have royal regalia. They didn't have the best of the best. They didn't have red bottoms. They didn't have the right pocketbook to put on. They, they didn't have the coach purse. They didn't have the Louis Vuitton. They didn't have, he said, I want you now to go and get those people. Everybody whose heart is broken, everybody who's lame and who is maimed, and we have pushed them to the outside of the city. Watch this because he tells them twice, don't just go to the ones that are in the street that are easily accessible, but he says, I want you to go to the highway. I want you to do something, and I want you to go to those who are out on the fringes. I want you to go, watch this, look at the word he says, I want you to compel them. In the Greek, that word means I want you to go and arrest them. I want you to go and drag them, whatever you have to do. That is about the church, brothers and sisters. We have to do whatever we can do to bring people into the love and show them the kingdom and the grace of God. Going into the highways and the hedges. 
going to go with those who are saying, I've lost my way. And other people have walked around them and said, you're not going to be anything. We go to them, those who are broken, mothers who are hooked on crack and cocaine, and they say, we ain't going to be nothing. You go and get them specifically. Men whose hearts are broken and they're caught in all kinds of addiction, we go and get them. Why? Because the dinner bell has been rung and that everybody has a place in the kingdom. I want you to know before you go home that you don't need to overlook anybody. Everybody is invited to the table. Gospel Nation, go get your friends. Can I be so bold? Go get your enemies and tell them they've been invited to the table. Amen, somebody. Go and get those who people, you walk by at Kroger and you walk by at, on the street when they're standing out with a sign. Go and get them. And that's who Jesus says go and get. All of those who are lame and maimed and broken and bleeding and crying and hurting. The, the gospel is open. The, 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 the banquet hall is prepared for them. We'll sit here all dressed up looking good. Go home and walk past people. Lord have mercy. We'll go home and say, I feel good about myself. I feel good because I went to church. I did my one deed. I did good this week. What'd you do on Monday? When he said, come and keep on coming. Stop by and tell this one I love him. Call that one and tell him that you need to pray for him. What are you doing on a week-to-week -week basis, a day-to-day -day basis? Please stand to your feet. That you have missed the call of God. Listen, stop being a casual disciple. A convenient disciple, when it's convenient, and some people are just false disciples, followers. Pray and ask God to make you a, a passionate follower of Jesus Christ. I mean, follow him no matter what. Can I just tell you something before I let you go? Last week, I was in my prayer closet and I was praying. And there these tears are again. And all I could tell God, I followed you. I followed you. See, see, all I could tell him is I followed you. I, I've been obedient to you. All I, I followed you. When the mountain was high, I followed you. When the valleys were low, that's all I could say. I followed you. God, I, I promised you that where you lead me, I would follow. And I'll be honest, God, I don't like where I am right now, but I'm following you. And I follow you if it gets better or not. Because I'm a compassionate follower. I want you to become passionate followers. Not convenient followers, not casual followers. I want you to show up in the banquet room and sit at the table and eat everything the Lord has prepared for you. This he has prepared for us.